Hello, this is a fairly um, simple kinematics problem, but can be a little bit tricky, uh, especially if you're not used to it. That pops up a lot in college uh, first semester physics or um, high school AP physics or something like that, or even just uh, trig physics. So uh, in general, you have a mass sliding down a ramp uh, and you need to figure out uh, the final velocity. There's multiple variations of this. It could be, you know, how much uh, energy is dissipated by friction, all this kind of stuff. Um, we'll talk about the concepts you're going on and how to do it. But basically, what's the final velocity of this box that started at the top of the ramp and is slid down to the bottom of the ramp? Uh, we know the length of the ramp, which we'll call D, and we know the mass uh, and the angle theta. So uh, in order to do that, we need to calculate the net force, which is going to be the force of gravity or the weight that is acting uh, parallel to the ramp, uh, sliding it down the ramp, minus the force of friction that is holding it back. The force of friction can also be determined by the normal force times the coefficient of friction. If you don't remember how to calculate the parallel force and the normal force, drawing a diagram really helps. The first thing you should do is draw the weight straight down, uh, which is going to be the hypotenuse of the triangle, and then you're going to draw the uh, weight vector in a or new orthogonal basis. In other words, you're just uh, going to describe it in terms of these two different vectors. So you draw the parallel force parallel to the ramp, and then 90 degrees out of that, you draw the uh, perpendicular force or normal force perpendicular to the parallel force. And the key trick here is because these angles are uh, intersecting, this line is intersecting two parallel lines, this angle alpha has to be angled to this angle alpha, which means because they're both right triangles, this angle theta has to be this angle theta. And that's how you get the parallel force is W sine theta uh, and the normal force is W cosine theta. So now for this expression, we can plug these in. I factored out the W, so I have the net force being W times sine theta minus mu k cosine theta. Um, that's just factoring out the W. And then I'm going to call this thing beta. So the net force is going to be uh, W beta or mg beta. Now to actually solve this question, question, there's two approaches you can take. You can take the kind of brute force approach of, hey, it's constant acceleration. So I can, I know the distance. So I can use, you know, A over 2T squared plus the initial velocity times T plus the initial position equals X. Solve that for, you know, this 10.2 meters. I would do that by putting the coordinate system here, calling this X. So you would get uh, X naught is going to be negative D in this case, and then the uh, the acceleration is just gonna be this G beta. That's gonna be the net acceleration. Um, the other way you can do it, which is a little bit more elegant, a little bit simpler, is to use the idea of the conservation of energy. The work done on the box has to be equal to the kinetic energy at the end because there's no kinetic energy um, at the beginning. So whatever work is done on that box has to be equal to uh, 1 half mv squared, the final velocity squared. Uh, just so you know, once you solve this, you also need to kind of use the fact that velocity under constant acceleration is equal to AT. I've worked out both of these equations on another board, so we'll go ahead and work through those. Um, again, uh, so we have this uh, first equation here, um, which is just the general form. And we have the fact that uh, under constant acceleration, uh, the velocity is going to be equal to A times the time. So we can use this to save for the time. Again, there's no initial velocity because it's at rest. This is going to be negative D, and this A is going to be G times beta. Uh, so plugging that in, if we set that equal to zero, because uh, we want it at the end of the coordinate system, we'll get uh, G beta over 2T squared equals D, or T equals the square root of 2D over G beta. Now we want the velocity, right, which is the acceleration times the time. So we need to multiply this by a G beta in order to get the velocity. Uh, and we can factor that in time into the square root and we get V equals the so square root of 2G beta times D. Once again, beta is just this expression, sine theta minus mu K cosine theta. The work method is again, a little bit more elegant. Uh, we set the work equal to one half MV squared where V is the final velocity. The work met is just gonna be the net force times the distance in this case, fairly simple. Uh, we know that's MG beta D. We set those two equal, mg beta d equals one half mv squared. We cancel the m's and then we simplify to get the same expression. Uh, v is gonna be the square root of two g uh, beta d. I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know uh, in a comment below if you can. Mm -hmm.